This isn't charades, this is the game. Yeah, you know, helping. It's third and eleven. Trick. Yeah. Trick. Dallas Thomas Ooh, from behind. Do you enjoy these games? Four. In which the player must appear ridiculous? Life is a game in which the player must appear ridiculous. I cannot begin to tell you what this means. Well, that's pretty good news for me, too. <laughs> I'm sorry to disturb you. I've just heard news. It's over. This first mashup for us is one that we would all acknowledge that we know. It's the one, I'm just looking at people looking around, it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's the one that acknowledges that you can be in a crowd of people and still be all alone. That you can be surrounded by folks and not have a single person in the room that knows you, really knows you, identifies with you, understands your pains, your struggles, your joys, your sorrows. There's an interesting epidemic going across the United States. It's the epidemic of loneliness. In the last 25 years, those who would describe themselves as lonely has doubled. In spite of all the wonderful connections that we have with technology. This is my own version of a mashup. <laughs> tuxedo, jeans and flip-flops. When I came to Mark several weeks ago and said, I need a weekend where I can just have some family time with everybody, talk to them about lots of the different things that are coming on and, and that we're going to be dreaming about in the, coming, in the coming year. Our year is really the academic year, not the calendar year. When I, I said, I need some time to be able to do this, but it's really four sermonettes, four things that I need to speak about. He said, let's do a mashup. So just to tell you how old I was, I am, I'm still old. I had never heard of mashup. And then he told me what it was, and I said, oh, I've done that. Back in my old Young Life days, I remember leading singing in the 70s in Young Life and us singing Amazing Grace to the tune, House of the Rising Sun. <laughs> and it was a mashup. So there's a challenge in front of you that I want to talk to you about four different things. The first mashup being this weird juxtaposition of words that says you can be a crowd, be in a crowd and still be alone. That you could actually be here today in a room full of people who have a common purpose as you. On a spiritual journey, a quest to be able to understand their soul and have it developed and understand what it means to know Christ and to follow him. You could be in a room here or you could be over in the theater and you could be actually surrounded by folks that have that same thing and you could feel completely by yourself. Now, those of you who've been around a while, you say, oh, no, I know what he's going to do. The bald dude's about to talk about groups again. <laughs> and you are right. <laughs> Several years ago, they did a study with monkeys. The study was is that they would put a monkey in a cage and then it would expose him to all kinds of stress, bright lights, loud noises, all kinds of things, and they would measure the level of stress that the monkey experienced. And then they would do one thing, one simple thing. They wouldn't change any of the stress, the lights, or the sounds, 
but they would simply put a monkey in the cage with them. And they measured all the neurological indicators and found out that the stress level of the monkey went down 50%. We've had this little thing going on and it's in your chairs. Who's your monkey? What we'd like for you to learn is what monkeys already know. That life is better, richer, safer, stronger, more meaningful in a community of people that know you and love you. Not just any community. We're not just talking about a group of people who you kind of gather together and you work together or you gather together this afternoon and watch the game. I'm surprised anybody's here with the Niner game coming on soon. Thank you for your commitment. And thank God for TiVo. But in the midst of that, I'm not talking about that kind of community. I'm talking about the kind of community where you come together in a Christocentric purpose to bring Jesus out in the way that you work, the way that you live, the way you do relationships, the way you parent, the way that you speak, and that you also have permission to bring that out in other people. That kind of community is what we're talking about. I have 2,000 years of precedence that say if you want to be serious about your faith, if you want to grow, if you want to be, have uh, safeguards around you that will ensure the quality of your life and the impact of your days, 2,000 years of precedence tell me that as Christ followers, it involves one simple thing being with other people who feel the same. We give ourselves here to the process of becoming like Jesus. We call it 640 discipleship, where we love God completely with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We love our neighbors compassionately, trying to serve them and and express to them kindness, knowing that if not for the grace of God, it could be us that would be down and out. But we also have a third love, the genius of Jesus that says that we would love one another as Christ has loved us, pulling Christ out in each other. I plead with you. I plead with you. If you have not made joining a life group a part of your plan for the fall, go by the table on the way out. Stop and connect now. Stop. Take the time, give it a chance. We're going to kick off a new series next week called Relation Slips. Why it's so hard to love. It'll be a great one to to experience in community as you get an opportunity during the week and we create curriculum and, and questions for you to be able to come together and talk about what you've heard. Or not talk, just listen. Take a chance this fall. Get in community. Do not allow yourself to be part of such a great crowd of people and to still be all alone. There's another benefit of being in a community as a church is that we are in a community of other churches. And I just thought it would be a great reminder for us to know that this weekend, or I'm sorry, next weekend, Garden Cities, a church that we helped start a couple of years ago, will celebrate its two-year anniversary two weekends from now. Not this weekend, but next. And then this weekend, Awakening Church, which came straight from us, will celebrate their one-year anniversary this weekend. So being part of a community means even understanding that not everything that's going on is necessarily happening in this room at the same time. That we are a church of many locations related by Christ to many different folks. Okay, you ready for the next mashup? All right, we're probably the only church in America that kicked off the NFL season with Downton Abbey. And now we've got a few more mashups for you. So here we go.
want you to hit me as hard as you can. Why? How much can you know about yourself if you've never been in a fight? Wait. Oh. Ow! It hit me in the ear! It was on the tip of everyone's tongue. Can I be next? We just gave it a name. Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is... Wow, nice. You do not talk about Fight Club. Is that your blood? Some of it, yeah. Our second mashup this morning is an area that I want to make sure that we get a chance to talk to as we begin our new year. I want to introduce you again to Andy Gridley and um, talk a little bit about what he's going to be leading us in um, very soon. The mashup here is we're going to grow our church by asking you to leave this location. And we're not asking you to leave Westgate, not asking you to be a part of a different church. We're actually trying to expand and change the way we think about ourselves by, change and by expanding out um, into another location. And so, Andy, you've got the opportunity and the challenge in front of you. Lots of variables still to be figured out, but you've got that in front of you. Won't you tell us some of the things that you're thinking? My wife, Lindsay, my little girl, Magnolia, who's six, my son, Moses, who's four and a half, we are so thrilled to join the Westgate team. Uh, I think uh, just, just a few years back, God started really giving us a vision here in the Bay Area as we were serving in another church context for a way that we might, in faith, step out of the comfortability of our church context uh, and kind of venture into the unknown, to be honest, and discover how maybe God could use us uh, to, to impact more of this Bay Area. You know, this Bay Area happens to be one of the most unchurched areas in the entire world. It's a significant area as far as influence. Uh, it's like a modern day uh, Corinth or Rome or something that we'll read about in our Bibles together. There's just so much impact, so much opportunity here, and yet it happens to be one of the most unchurched areas. So I was excited to learn that Westgate Church had a very similar vision that God was giving this church, giving us for moving out beyond one zip code to, to many locations to reach as many people as we could here in the Bay Area. As your campus pastor, I'm going to be asking you to join us in prayer. We, there's the what the where and the who, and you can join us in praying through all of that. Where is the location? We have some ideas in mind, but it's still very preliminary. What it looks like, we know that it, we want it to have live uh, worship, just like we have here with some video teaching. There's a lot of other components based on where we meet. And finally, who? Some of you guys are going to feel a tug on your heart to join us, at least in exploring what this could look like. And so I wanna ask you to set up an appointment with me if that's the first step for you. Maybe you're confused or you're concerned about it. Join us in prayer. We really wanna to join together and ask God to give us the location, the right team, and really that he would give us new fruit, a new chapter of ministry together. Okay, as you hear Andy talk about this and it begins to cast a vision of, of a different way to do church, I don't want you to think for the, that this is for somebody else on your row or somebody at another service. This is for all of us to begin to embrace and to begin to think about Westgate um, differently, to begin to pray um, together collectively how we can maximize the impact and steward the opportunity that God's given us here in our city. So. Um, you'll begin to hear more and more about it. We, there's so many details now that we can't be more specific other than this. The elders, under the elders' direction, we have made a hire, and we are now committed that um, we're going to expand to a different address and, in, and infiltrate and reach another community as we've tried to do around here. So more news coming. We'll get back to you on that. But just know um, we need your prayers on it. Okay, now we'd like to talk to you straight from the Westgate Shack um, about the third mashup which is having more by giving away. Um, you've heard over the last several weeks that we've talked about our loud offering, living out unselfish devotion. That it's our way of trying to put together several of the offerings that we've done around here, pulling them together and making it more a little more simple, and then pulling our resources and getting pledges from you over 12 months about what you might like to do in giving, and then allowing us to kind of plan and and put in front of us some of the opportunities. 
Well, the opportunities are already just rolling in. And on top of all of the support of our normal um, missionaries that we support every month, and of course the beautiful day efforts that we'll do, um, there's, there's ideas about a thrift store here in town where we can take lightly used stuff from some churches that we team up with and start to put them back into other hands, even allowing you to go in and, and change things out and, and, um, and be able to give vouchers to folks who are on the, sh on the street and are homeless. And another way to really kind of help our city there. There's some ideas that are coming in from the Philippines. Um, Tom's already told me about an opportunity there for... Uh